Welcome to JAG Learning, the physics section, unit 3.1, forces advanced problem. Uh, the question is, a seven kilogram box is on a downward sloping incline that makes an angle of 20 degrees with respect to the horizontal. The box is attached to a rope that passes over a pulley and is tied on a three kilogram mass that is freely hanging as shown. If the incline is frictionless and the pulley is massless and frictionless, if the incline is frictionless and the pulley is massless and frictionless, what is the acceleration of the box? So the first thing we need to do, as you can see in the picture here, we have a seven kilogram box, and we also have a three kilogram box. And they both have a tensional force on this pulley here, on this rope that attaches them. So what we need to do first is make a free body diagram of each system and come up with a system of equations that we can solve for. So the first box, the first free body diagram that we need to do is the seven kilogram box. And I'm going to have it um, horizontal to the ground. So yeah, the box here. Now the force of gravity is on a little bit of an angle here with the platform here. So we need to draw this on an angle as well. So it's more like that. That's the force of gravity. And we can split this up into our different components here. So here we have the x component. That's the one that's parallel. So g of x and f g of y. But we also have this tensional force from, from the rope here. So we have f t. And that is FT here. So that will be our first free body diagram. And it will just be, well, we can draw that. This is the positive X direction and this is the positive Y direction. So I'm going to sum up the forces in the X direction because that's the direction it's moving. It's moving to the right. So the first equation we're going to do is the sine of the angle because this is the opposite so f g of x and then plus the tensional force because it's moving in the positive direction it's pointing in the positive direction is equal to i'm going to call this mass one just because we have two different masses here that way we don't confuse them all right, and this is our first equation. All right, let's solve for the second equation now. I'll just go ahead and write it here. So with the second box, we have two forces. We have the force of tension pointing upwards. So this is our force of tension. And we also have the force of gravity pulling the box downwards. Now, because this is moving downwards, we're going to make this component the positive direction. We're going to make this the positive uh, force. Okay. So let's just add our second equation here. So we have the force of gravity. Then we're going to do minus because it's opposing the direction is equal to now this is going to be mass two. That's what I'm going to set it as. So mass to acceleration. All right, let me get all this other stuff out of the way. Okay, so now that we have these two equations, let's add them up. We have F G X plus the force of tension is equal to mass one acceleration and force of gravity and this one is on the second box minus the force of tension is equal to mass two times acceleration now we can add these two equations and we see that the force of tension cancels out and now we can add these two so the force of gravity in the x direction of the first box plus the force of gravity on the second box is equal to mass one times acceleration is plus mass two times acceleration. Now, 
this here, remember, is just the sine of the force of gravity, or the sine of the angle times the force of gravity. So let's just substitute that in right now. And remember, the force of gravity is just m times g. m times g. So again, since we're taking the sine of it, we can do mass of the first box times g sine theta plus the force of the second box, which is mass 2 g is equal to, I'm just going to go ahead and take out the a out of both of these. That way it will be easier for us to solve. All right. So now we have everything here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take out a g here. M1 sine of 20. Oops. Yep. Sine. Oops. That should be sine theta plus m2. And I'm going to divide this by this term. So that is m1 plus m2 is equal to the acceleration. Now we have everything that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it into our calculator. All right, m1 times the sine of 20 plus 3. All right, divided by seven plus three. All right, so what that should give you is about five point two nine meters over second squared, which is answer choice D.